welcome to the next lecture of uh, ac circuit analysis in which we were discussing about the ac power analysis today we are going to start the next important topic of ac power analysis which is maximum average power transfer we have seen in dc analysis also that uh, the power is transferred from source to the load and in order to get the maximum power transfer to the load we need to get the equivalent resistance or thevenin equivalent resistance of the network equal to the load resistance this was the condition we studied in chapter 4 of this book so in order to have the maximum power transfer to the load rl its value should be equal to the thevenin equivalent resistance of the circuit so for a linear circuit zl in case of ac analysis that we are using the term impedance because imaginary part is also now noteworthy so we use zl and in order to get the maximum power transferred to the load we need to find the condition also so this whole circuit is simplified is this one where the voltage source is thevenin equivalent voltage and zth is thevenin equivalent impedance in the rectangular form the thevenin equivalent impedance can be written as rth plus j times xth and zl the load impedance is uh, equal to r L plus J times XL, the real resistive portion of load impedance and the reactive portion of the load impedance. So in order to find the current through the load, what would be the condition if we see from here, in order to get this current, we need to divide voltage with ZTH plus ZL. This is what we are doing here and now putting these values from these 13a and 13b equations we can reach the value here and in order to re get the average power we have seen this relationship in our previous lecture half times the uh, square of uh, phasor current and rl so the value of average power can be given by this equation where we have put i from equation number 14 so in our objective is to adjust the load parameters rl and xl in order to reach the maximum power transfer condition so what we do is we are going to find its maximum value and as we know that taking the par partial derivative first order derivative of some given equation can provide us the maximum or minimum conditions and equating it to zero so here we are taking the partial derivative with respect to xl and rl because we need to find the conditions for xl and rl at which the maximum power transfers to the load and to get this maxima we need to uh, put it in equal to zero why we are putting it equal to zero this is because that we have for example this kind of uh, value of the average power with respect to this is capital P and this is for example value of XL or it can be value of RL so in order to ha have the maximum value what we do is when we take the derivative we are taking this means that we are finding its slope at this point when we take it equal to zero because slope at this point is zero only for example if we are taking the slope at this point it will not be equal to zero or any other point slope at any other point will not be equal to zero except the maximum condition this can also be true for the minimum for example if we need to find such uh, the minimum value 
taking the partial derivative at least point will result equal to zero because the derivative is actually finding the slope of this curve at the given point and this slope can only be zero at maximum or minimum value in order to find maximum or minimum that is why we are using the maximum or minimum value sorry so now when we take these partial derivatives and equate them to zero we will reach the solution here the value of xl would be equal to minus xth and rl value is given by this relationship so if we put xl equal to minus xth here in this equation this will simplify the value of r l also is rth putting equation 17 in 18 leads to the conclusion that for maximum average power transfer zl must be selected in such a way that xl should be equal to xth minus and rl should be equal to rth and this says like this one zl is equal to zth conjugate it's because of this negative sign so the for maximum average power transfer the load impedance must be equal to the complex conjugate of thevenin equivalent impedance and when we put these values back into the power equation in order to find the maximum average power transfer what we get is the p max is v t h squared divided by a times r t h this is the condition for maximum average power transfer if we put on the values of rl and xl according to our just derived condition mentioned here we can get this equation number 20 and if that l is equal to square of that th we say the load is matched with the source that is the condition of maximum power transfer is fulfilled in a situation in which the load is purely real for example we do not have any reactive part any inductor or capacitor in the load then uh, the thevenin uh, then the load reactance would be equal to zero in that condition rl can be found from this relationship and this is from equation number 18 here where we put xl equal to zero then r square plus xth square because this term will be zero in that case so in order to transfer the maximum power to a resistive load the load impedance or re resistance as we have neglected or considered xl equal to zero is equal to the magnitude of thevenin impedance this is nothing but the modulus of the thevenin impedance r th plus j x th is the thevenin impedance and when we take its modulus it's same as this one so now looking at an example determine the load impedance zl that maximizes the average power drawn from the circuit of figure here what is the maximum average power so first we need to find thevenin equivalent we our load is zl so in order to find the conditions for maximum power transfer we need to get the thevenin equivalent of this whole circuit which means that we need to find out its thevenin equivalent impedance and thevenin equivalent voltage so first to find the thevenin equivalent impedance what we need to do is we need to short circuit this voltage source like here and now looking from these two terminals of zl we need to find the equivalent impedance and what we see is that this resistance is in parallel with this combination of resistance and capacitance and after finding the parallel combination the result would be in series with this inductor 
this is written in this equation so 5j is in series with the parallel combination of 4 and 8 minus j6 so just solving we will get theven and equivalent impedance like this one and in order to get the theven and equivalent voltage we need to put our voltage source back into the circuit and then calculate the uh, terminal voltage across that l so this is nothing but simple voltage divider across 4 ohm and 8 minus j6 ohm there is no current flowing through j5 when the load terminals are open which is important condition for finding 7 and equivalent voltage so we just need to divide this 10 volt between these two sources sorry be between these two impedances so this 7 and equivalent voltage is 7.45 angle minus 10.3 so and according to our just derived condition in order to get the maximum power transferred from the load uh, from the source to the load load impedance should be equal to the conjugate of theven and equivalent impedance so it should be 2.933 minus j 4.46 and according to equation 20 we just saw the maximum power would be vth modulus square divided by 8 times RTH and VTH modulus is this one 7.45 and RTH is 2.93 another example in the circuit of this figure find the value of RL that will absorb the maximum average power and calculate that power we need to proceed in a similar portion way this is purely resistive case we should keep this in mind so there is no reactive part in it and in order to get the theven and equivalent impedance we need to short circuit this one this voltage source and then the theven and equivalent impedance would be found by taking the parallel of these two because this is now short circuited like this one these two elements are in parallel with this one and we are looking from here so 40 minus j30 is in parallel with 20 ohm this is theven and equivalent impedance and then finding the voltage across j20 we need to just divide this voltage between these two impedances like this one so and because the value of RL that will absorb the maximum power this is specific case we just studied here in this equation number 21 where XL was 0 and this is the case here also that is why we need to find that L is uh, sorry RL is modulus of ZTH this is theven and equivalent impedance we need to find its modulus magnitude and this one is the answer for RL <coughs> in order to transfer maximum power average power the current through the load is this one because now we the circuit will be simplified like this one this is theven and equivalent impedance this is RL and this is theven and equivalent voltage this is VTH this is ZTH and this is RL now in this circuit if we need to find the current flowing through here would be theven in voltage divided by RL plus ZTH so in this way we find the current through the load and the power transferred or power dissipated in the load would be half times I square RL we have seen this relationship in our previous lecture so we need to put the modulus only 1.8 of the current take it square and the value of RL is given here so it is just a mathematical calculation to reach this final answer
the effective or RMS value the effect in SE quantities we need to measure the effective values because for example for most of the power delivered to by the utilities is sinusoidal and average value of the sinusoidal waveform voltage or current would be equal to zero and so in order to but we are still getting some useful work done and so in order to reach the uh, in order to get the real calculation or real uh, uh, real impact of the voltage and the current we need to find their if effective values effective value of a periodic current is the dc current equivalent of that for example in this waveform in these circuits let's say this is ac voltage applied and the current ift is flowing through it the useful work done or useful power consumed by this resistive part is equivalent to the amount of current flowing when effective value of voltage is applied so what our effective or rms value would be that does the similar amount of work similar amount of energy transfer from source to the load so the amount of current would be effective current in that case <clears throat> so how to proceed in mathematical form the average power is this one as we have seen in our previous slides previous lecture also and the power absorbed by the resistor in case of DC circuit this one is I square R now in order to have the equivalent impact of this current I and this I effective we need to equate both of them so we when we so equate both these equations and solve for i effective what we will get is this one similarly if we are operating in terms of the voltage then we can get this term for example in that case we could write v effective divided by r here and similarly in terms of voltage as well so what is this equation this is the square of the instantaneous current we have taken its mean value and we are taking its average value with this integral so if this indicates that the effective value is, is root of the mean of the square this is the square root so average value mean and square root of the time varying signal would lead us to the effective value so and we can simply call it IRMS root mean square values <coughs> in general we can write that RMS value would be the square of the function integrated over the time period in order to re get its average value its uh, mean value and taking the square root of it so first we need to find the square then mean and then taking the root would result in the RMS value for example if this function of time is the sinusoidal function as we are seeing throughout our SE analysis course then this i of t or f x of t would be i m cos omega t and taking the square would be that we take the square of the maximum value and the cos as well and then we simplify this what we will get is i m under is divided by square root 2 so if we have a sinusoid then the RMS value would be equal to I m by square root 2 this is very specific case we need not to confuse it with any other type of wave form for example for square wave sawtooth wave triangular wave or any other type of wave we cannot write directly this one we need to calculate their equivalent result using this relationship or and then taking the root or using in general this relationship so this is very specific case of a cosine function or sinusoidal waveforms i would say 
similarly for the voltage waveform we can find if voltage waveform is in sinusoid then we can find the rms value like this one keep in mind that equation 28 and 9 are only valid for sinusoids as i have already mentioned so if we look back into our average power relationship this is what it was half of vm im cos of theta v minus theta im so if we split this two as square root two multiplied by square root two then we can write it like this one vm divided by square root two and im divided by square root two multiplying square root two with the square root two would lead to two and it is same as this one and this is nothing but the rms value so we can put it directly here similarly the rms value of current can be written here so we now have a new form of this average power in terms of rms voltage and rms currents like this one similarly the average power absorbed by the resistor is we were using i square r and now we can use uh, the uh, as i rms squared we were using this relationship previously we studied the average power through the resistor is i square r half of i square r so when we're putting the values we can find it like this one so the sinusoidal voltage or current is specified it is often in terms of the maximum or peak values or its rms values since its average value is zero we are used to listen the terms like 110 volt in our homes or offices uh, or 220 volt in our homes or offices these 110 or 220 vo volts are actually the rms values power industries us usually represent or specify these voltage values in rms terms even for the phasor phasor forms of representation it is convenient in power analysis to express voltage and current in their rms values and analog voltmeters and ammeters are also designed to calculate the rms value directly here is an example how to get the rms values for example this is not a sinusoidal signal this is a waveform which has uh, the shape of 5t from 0 to 2 and minus 10 from 2 to 4 we can find this relationship from using the our previous knowledge of equation of line this equation of line y is equal to for example we used to write mx plus c where m is the slope of the line x is our x coordinate c is our y intercept in this case y intercept is zero slope of the line can be calculated using the change in y upon uh, sorry change in y upon change in x so, so change in y is 10 and change in x is 2 so 10 divided by 2 would be 5 x value is t this is i of t because our y variable is i of t plus c is 0 so i of t is 5t as we have written here and for this portion the slope is 0 slope is 0 so this part will be 0 and the y intercept would be minus 10 so that is why we have written minus 10 here so now we already know this relationship 1 upon t 0 to t i square dt we need to put because we have two different ranges 0 to 2 and 2 to 4 so we need to integrate it in these two different ranges and after integrating and solving total time period is 4 so we have taken this 4 here so after after integrating and putting the limits here what we get is 8.165 is the rms current and one can verify that it is not equal to i peak upon 
square root 2 because it is not a sinusoidal function and the power absorbed by 2 ohm resistor would be uh, because this is RMS current I square R would result in the RMS uh, power absorbed by 2 ohm resistor similarly for this example we have this uh, half wave rectified sinusoid wave form we need to find its uh, RMS value so VFT is <coughs> 10 because its peak value sine of t and from 0 to pi whereas from pi to 2 pi its value is 0 now putting the same value in the equation as before and integrating it we will get this RMS value the average power absorbed by the resistor of 10 ohm would be V RMS divided by R V RMS square divided by R which is 2.5 watt with this I close our today's lecture see you in next lecture soon goodbye